If there's one thing that's cooler than shooting awesome looking rifles, it's kit. Nylon equipment, plate carriers, chest rigs, pistol belt setups, you name it. Now, there's a lot of nylon out there, a lot of different plate carrier options, placard options, and different products that you can slap onto your body. And the purpose of this video is just to take you through a setup that I have come to appreciate that it helps me with my job and that I use for work pretty much all the time. I have used a lot of different plate carriers on the market. I've used Cries, Spiritus, Faro, Weird Foreign Crap, SNS. Uh, we've got old plate carriers here, Paraclete, all sorts of things. And everything has its own pros and cons. But a few years ago, we designed our own plate carrier. This is the AC-1. It has lots of uh, similarities to all of the other slick carriers on the market, the Faro, the Spiritus, the MBAV, the you name it, all the slick plate carriers out there, which have been around since like the early 2000s. Uh, there were a couple things to this plate carrier that we did uh, that were different than a lot of companies. One is we wanted a very easily changeable cummerbund uh, utilizing a exterior Velcro flap cover because uh, one of the plate carriers I was using at the time, uh, the Velcro cover bun is, was exposed and that was super annoying getting in inside of, of the out in and, in and outside of vehicles. Uh, I could snag and then kind of rip apart, which was kind of nasty. So I wanted to cover that up, but also wanted to make it very easy to move the cover bun around. Um, and then the other thing was when we designed the cover bun, I wanted to do something more than just standard 5.56 uh, rifle cells. So in this case, there's a small uh, cell for like multi-tools, pistol mags, a rifle mag size cell for your standard stain ag sized magazines or civilian radios, and then a larger cell in the rear, uh, which at the time fit our uh, ITRK EDC med pouch just fine and all sorts of other things like gloves and baklavas and like whatever else. So this is the base uh, AC-1, it's $160 and it gets you into having a decent slick plate carrier right out of the uh, box um, and a way to carry some stuff on there. Um, now, before I go further in this video, there are two disclaimers or two things to talk about. The first one is as a civilian, and probably 98% of you watching this video are civilians, uh, we don't know what we're building our kit around. We don't have a specific operation or mission. We don't know exactly how many mags we need. We don't know how much equipment we need. But at the end of the day, while we are in peacetime, there is certain equipment we should be acquiring so that we have capability in the case something happens in the future. And what that looks like for civilians, and this is kind of a pro and a con is we may have to buy a lot of different things because we don't know what we're going to need in the future. And when supply lines are affected by war, disasters, emergencies and whatnot, we probably can't acquire any more equipment after that. So as a civilian, I'm trying to acquire a lot of different options so that I can tailor them to my mission or whatever happens to be in the future if that happens. Uh, the other thing to talk about is budget. I'm going to be showing a plate carrier setup that is in the, it's not the highest tier, most expensive option. It's more in the middle. And the reason it's in the middle is I don't really recommend sort of the budget route for getting armor, uh, which is like steel armor, uh, cheap Chinese plate carriers. They're super reflective, reflective under night vision, uh, horrible stitching that's going to fall apart. If you are poor or you don't have a lot of money to spend on this stuff, it, you're actually better off saving your money and buying something in the mid tier area than trying to buy something ultra budget. I do not recommend that. That's actually not going to help you long term because it's going to fall apart most likely or it's not even going to work. And then you're just going to have to rebuy everything later and you're going to end up spending more money. So this is a mid tier option. So let's get into it. So the first thing with the AC1, uh, well, we need armor. Uh, these are HESCO M210s. This is a sappy cut plate. Uh, you can read about all the threat protection levels um, on our website or on HESCO's website. The reason I really like these plates is they're uh, somewhat inexpensive. These are 655 bucks at the time of this video. It's a sappy cut, which means it is multi-curve. It's very comfortable. These are mediums. Um, I, I have a set of small uh, sappy plates. I've gotten a little bigger, you know, working out in the gym for the last year, put on 15 pounds. So mediums actually fit pretty good on me now. Uh, used to be the smalls, but so I got these mediums right here. One thing I do recommend if you're running a uh, one of these HESCO special threat plates or any plate that's similar, that's like just a hard plate and there's no like padding, uh, get some pads. Uh, in this case, we have a set, uh, the T-Rex pad, it's gonna look like this. Uh, there's some other ones out there. First Spear has a set. There's, I think every company basically has a set of pads. Uh, one thing that I do uh, for my body type is I actually cut the front pad out 
this will actually probably affect most of you guys so that when I'm wearing the plate against my body, this is a little uh, Linus tech tip, a little Botkin tech tip. Um, when you're wearing it tight to the body, you don't have as much pressure on your sternum. So I just chopped it out on every single plate and I'm good to go. I would also do that on the larger uh, plates, like 3810s. So I've got my plates here. It's at 655 bucks. I've got the AC1. I can slap those in. Cool, I'm good to go. But actually the first thing I'm gonna do to the AC1 is I'm going to upgrade the cummerbund. So using the flap, which is very easy to move this cummerbund around. So our old cummerbund comes off. I can always save that for another plate carrier or not. The new cummerbund is the same format, but in this case we added pull tab retainers. So you get this over here. So we've got these nice little squadron dealios here, or acronym, I can't remember what material it is. And it supports a shot cord and various pull tabs. In this case, we have a pull tab kit that we sell. Uh, it's got three, so you buy two of those and you can totally do up your cummerbund and you're set. Uh, but in this case, we still have the same format. Man, look at this Velcro. We have the same format, which I really like for two reasons. One, it's more useful than running, you know, a cummerbund with just five, five, six cells. And the coolest feature to this cummerbund that won't apply to all of you, but it's very cool, is you flip the cummerbund around and you can run 308 mags in the front so that you can run your front slick and you can have a little bit of ammo for your DMR. Or you can run three mags in the front and then have five DMR mags because running DMR mags is kind of a pain, uh, like 308 or 65 mags. So that's the thing about this cummerbund that no other cummerbund that I have found does. So if you are a DMR snipery type person and you're running a slick carrier for like sniper matches and you want to carry some ammo on the sides, you might want to check out this cummerbund and throw it on your existing plate carrier or you can get one of ours or not. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install this I'm going to install this in the standard configuration. I've gotten a little bigger, so I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. And now we have this cummerbund fully installed. And the price of it, it is a little pricey. Uh, these five inch elastic cummerbunds are not cheap to make. Um, it is $90, and then getting these little guys is plus 14 for both. So we're looking at uh, $104 for the cummerbund complete. So now we have an updated AC1, updated cummerbund, all that good stuff. And now what we need to discuss or figure out, actually we'll go ahead and install the plates. This will make this easier. Another thing we did on the AC1, people may or may not appreciate this, is we added the loop field on the inside really tall, which a lot of plate bags don't do. So if you're running a size small plate or something weird, um, you have enough Velcro that you can actually get your plate pocket to, you know, push that plate to the top of the bag uh, versus being stuck here at the bottom. So should have put the plate in backwards to get more comments. That would be funny. Boom. There we go. Sick. All right, so we got our plate carrier with our cummerbund. We can do some things with it. We can add some mags. We can add some whatevers. Uh, now the question is, what do we put on the front? So your placard options, there's a lot out there. Now, we recently uh, launched this boy. Uh, this is the triple mag uh, flap placard. Um, what's cool about this is it is similar to the Cry. Uh, it's very much inspired by the Cry placard, although the Cry one is outdated and, and doesn't fit a lot of mags. Uh, this thing can hold two mags per cell two 5.56 magazines, or one 308, uh, two 5.45 AK mags, one 7.62 by 39 mag. There's loops on the sides, so you build it into a little micro rig if you're into that sort of thing. And the height of the actual uh, placard can be adjusted as well using this one wrap and then moving it up and down. So sort of a modernized, uh, just traditional flat placard that you can run on the front of plate carriers, such as ours. What I like about this is keeps all my magazines retained very well, but I can also use it for whatever I want. So I don't have to like swap out placards for different kinds of magazines. I can literally run everything from the same. I can run MP5 mags out of this. I can run eight per cell if I really want to get wild and Modern Warfare 2 style. 
Uh, so if you're someone who's on a budget, I actually recommend getting something like this because you're not going to have to go buy three different placards, one for your 5.56 mags, one for your 308, one for your sub gun or whatever. You could literally get one of these and be done for years. Um, so that's really the reason that we developed this. And it's, it's not even, you know, this isn't going to be the fastest option or the most trendy option out there. But again, this does everything. You can run smokes in it. You can run your iPhones in it. You can run just all kinds of crap. So we'll mount this to the front for starters. So that's $90 for this. And it comes with a lot of hardware. In this case, I'm going to use the Swift Clips because I like it. So boom, there we go. There's still room for a couple things. Because again, when you have nylon, you want to just cover it in equipment, right? Because that's what everyone does. Um, first thing that I want to do is I want to add some tourniquets to my kit. Now, this is a nice little elastic tourniquet carrier uh, that we had made for us years ago, back before they were really a thing. And now they're like all over the place. I don't think we were the first, but we were definitely the first to uh, market it big time. Um, and then now everyone makes them, which is great. I love it because it's an easy way to mount a tourniquet anywhere on the body. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take the placard. Actually, no, take it off. Leave it on. Yeah. Flip this to the front. And the reason you want to run these as opposed to throwing tourniquets in the cummerbund is I want to keep the pouches on the cummerbund free for other items like pistol mags and multi-tools. So I like to run a tourniquet on the right side. And then I'll run my radio. In this case, this is our civilian radio wing, which is not out yet. Well, unless this video is old when you're watching it. And I run this on the left side. Now, one thing to note about tourniquets, and I know people get really upset about this, but I've talked to a lot of like PJs and medics and, and whatnot, is if you're running a tourniquet on the right side of your body and your rifle is slung because you're a right-handed shooter, uh, it is really easy for a sling to get into the trap and then pull your tourniquet out. So what is more important than having your tourniquet jettison is just closing this off. Now I know that's gonna make some people really upset because they're like, oh, under stress, you'll die because you can't take this off. Well, odds are you're actually using this tourniquet on someone else and you're probably using this tourniquet over here on yourself if you're doing uh, self-aid. But I would rather keep this equipment on my body instead of my sling catching on it and throwing it across the range or you know into the ether. So that's one thing to think about if you're running tourniquets on this side of the body where your sling is. Um, but in this case, I'm not doing that. Because what I'm going to do instead, which is so much cooler, kind of, so I'm gonna go to the back of my plate carrier. And I'm actually gonna drop this guy. Underneath. Because I like having two tourniquets. Because why not? And this is going to be a deployment from the back. Super easy, super simple. Um, I have not had these fly out of my kit, uh, like in vehicles and stuff too much because it's nice and tight, but you can retrieve it fairly easily, which is really cool. That'll work. So I got two tourniquets now. I've got a radio wing ready to go for radio. We won't get into that though, because that's like too much stuff. So now there's one more real estate option that is available that has become very popular over the years, and that is dangler sack type pouches. Now, uh, the Spiritus sack is a great pouch that I use for different kinds of things. Uh, the Pharaoh dangler is also really nice, and now pretty much everyone has something. What I actually prefer running over all of those is this dump pouch. Uh, this is the Wallaby Dump Pouch, a product that we came out with recently. And the reason I like this is it's a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say it's more versatile than something like the sack, but it is. It's a giant pouch you can put anything in. But it's also a pouch that you can roll up when you don't need the stuff. And literally tuck away underneath your kit, which is how I often have mine until I need to start doing stuff. So we're just going to put this right here. And you can mount this inside on the plate bag to get it to sit more flat to the body, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. I don't really care. So now I have this ready to go. And when I want to put stuff in it, like water bottles, uh, my phones, you know, whatever it is, a stapler even, I can open it up and I can start dumping stuff in there. Now, the purpose of this pouch isn't necessarily uh, rifle magazines, that's what a lot of people think. I know it's how the Aussies like to use theirs and theirs is much larger. Uh, this is more for everything else. It's a general purpose pouch. You can put whatever you want in there. 
Um, it's not so much for, hey, on an empty mag, put it in, although you can. Um, it's literally for anything. Like I will sometimes just take this large med kit um, if I'm on the range with a lot of people and I just go, blunk, just drop it in there. And then I can put all my other crap in there and I have a big med kit on me. And it doesn't really get in the way. It's just here in the front. Uh, so that's why I have this on my kit. Now, as far as placard options go, so this one right here is $90. Uh, the other one that I really like using is the Mayflower quad flap. Uh, this one is 95. Uh, this one does not possess some of the modernized features of our placards, such as uh, chest rig loops and, you know, adjustable height uh, for the swift clips or even the ability to swap from swift clips to G hooks. You would have to cut these out and then add those. Um, but what I like about this placard right here is it's simple and it's straightforward. I can support four 556 five, magazines, which is really nice. And I have three. A lot of people don't like these. I actually don't mind them. Three oddly spaced pouches in the front. Um, this one will fit a right in the rain notebook, as you can see right here. Uh, this one can fit like batteries and this one can fit something else. Um, it's true, these pouches are kind of weird. Um, I would actually probably rather have two, two you know, larger pouches than three weird pouches. Um, but the thing I like about this is when you are running a, an elastic cummerbund like this, or a Velcro cummerbund, I should say, you can size this cummerbund in such a way that you have some loop hanging off of the sides. Just a, another Linus tech tip. And so this larger, you know, wider placard that has more Velcro than normal can still sit and adhere to the entire plate bag and actually roll across on top of all of your other equipment. And it's a very nice form factor and it keeps the placard stuck to the body. So if you have a cummerbund like this, you can space out. This is why tubes kind of suck, or another reason why. Um, you can get these larger placards to actually fit on your standard medium sappies, because these four mag placards will be wider than most medium sappy uh, plate carriers. Uh, and that's just how it is. So this is my other uh, favorite placard, if I just want to run dedicated 5.56. But again, if I want to run anything, I've got this guy right here. 308, 5.56, AK mags, doesn't matter. And if you want to go real cheap, you can get something like this. Uh, there's lots of uh, elastic options out there. This is the Shaw Concepts. I can't remember what it's called. Supports three 556 five, mags. It actually has some stuff built into it. Uh, Sharpie holders and things like that. Uh, this is like 65 bucks. And so if you just want to run three mags on the front, you can always grab one of these, slap it on. You got something. Uh, it definitely works. And his has adjustable ride height as well, uh, just like ours. And you can support a tourniquet, which is pretty nifty. So the way the carrier sits right now, this is priced at $1,238. That includes the two tourniquets. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this is, as I see it, a mid-tier priced plate carrier armor setup. This also includes the armor as well. Um, obviously, you can get a whole lot cheaper than that, but uh, I would not do that. I would not waste time or money doing something a whole lot cheaper. I would instead budget and have a plan to buy all of these pieces one at a time or I would say two at a time for the plate carrier and the armory. You should get those at the same time. But all these extra pieces, you can do as you go. Um, and you're, what you're going to have at the end of it is a much better uh, solution for carrying armor and wearing armor all day. Something that's much more adaptable that you can pull pieces off of than just going out and buying some weird uh, steel armor and a weird plate carrier that's jank as all get out because I have gone and bought those. Um, I recommend doing something like this. But again, if you can't afford this, I understand. Or if you want to buy it from someone else, that's great too. This is just a solution that we are presenting and that we offer and that we have manufactured and we have sold over, I think it's like 25,000 AC1s at this point. So a lot of people have picked those up um, and we continue to move a lot of them. So, but let's talk about equipment actually that goes on the plate carrier. Now this is where the money starts to get like a little wild because you could do whatever you want. You could get a thousand dollar radio, you get a $60 Baofeng. So we're going to leave the pricing now from like $1,200 for all of this and move into parts that I usually have on my plate carrier. So again, the main uh, purpose for the plate carrier for me is uh, training on the range. Uh, having protection of rifle plates, if I'm training around people that maybe I don't trust as much, like law enforcement agencies, which I have done in the past and have, has also been a little sketchy, um, or even when I go to military ranges. Um, a lot of military ranges require that you have a helmet and armor. So even like seven years ago, when I was going out to Fort Campbell, they told me, hey, have armor and a helmet. And thankfully at the time I had a ballistic helmet and I had armor. So I was able to go on some of the ranges and do some stuff, which was really fun. So the main thing is uh, magazines. So I like to uh, have some mags on the range. 
or just in my car ready to go, you know, because why not? It's America. So that's three five five six mags, effortless, easy. Pistol magazine, plus five base pad makes it easier to grab. You know, because having an extra is always a good idea. So headlamps. So you can obviously run a headlamp here in the center of your carrier. A lot of guys do that. It works quite well. I have them on a few plate carriers. Um, if there was only one head headlamp I could buy, it would be this one right here. This is the Charge Pro, I think is what it's called. And the reason I like this one is one, you can drop it into a, a helmet if you want to, into like an arc rail. Uh, but if you're wearing a ball ca cap and ear pro, you can wear it on the side and it's just much better of a uh, lighting experience than trying to run a headlamp in the front of your ball cap. And then usually you have to flip it and then depending on your ear pro, it kind of sucks. Um, this is just much more versatile than a standard headlamp and you could still wear it in front and kind of articulate the gooseneck and still have some illumination in front of you. So uh, what I like to do with my headlamps, if I'm not running them in the front, is I run them in one of the side pouches. In this case, it'll be uh, the one that I don't need to get into. So it'll be this one here on the side. So I have it on my kit at all times. Multi-tool. So in this case, I have a mutt. Pro tip, as cool as it is to do this and have your little, your little dealio on the side of the elastic, if you have this on the other side, your sling will get caught on that. So only do this if you're running it on your opposing side from where your sling is. And it does keep it from falling deeper into the pouch, and so that's nifty. Uh, it has been cold, so I've been rocking this uh, half mask in my kit. Uh, but now that we're coming out of winter, I'm probably not going to need that anymore. But originally, this just sat on the side. So again, with this large cell, you could put all kinds of crap in there. Um, so I was just rocking this on the side. I'm not going to need that anymore, though, so that could probably come out. Go in my sock drawer. One thing I like to do is to take our um, EDC ITRK, which is a shrink wrap. This one actually lost its seal, but that's okay because, you know, all the other stuff is still packaged inside. And I like to bundle this up and shove it into the large cell here on the side. And I'm going to... Yeah. And then this cell here on the side, there's a few things, you know, you can do. I have this fun little uh, survival kit that I built forever ago off of uh, some red beard recommendations. So I have like a little compass, some sunblock, some iodine tablets, a Swiss Army knife, and then some bug spray. I sometimes have this in my plate carrier, but let's face it, training on the range, I don't need this crap. May as well just, you know. Um, so instead I run batteries because I do use batteries on the range all the time. And I should refit this one with some 2032s for optics, uh, but double A's for night vision. Uh, most optics don't run those. CR123s, you can never have enough of those. And then 2032s for pistol optics or rifle optics. Um, so usually that can just go right in here and it's good to go. And even without the pull tab, it's not going to go anywhere. So that's super nice. Uh, the other thing that you can run, uh, which is probably more reasonable here on the side, is uh, a covered right in the rain, rain notebook is another thing that you can run on the side of your... Uh, plate carrier. I'm actually going to take this out because I don't need that. And I can do my notebook instead. And again, you won't have another cummerbund that can do this because pretty much every other cummerbund is 5.56 pouch sized only, which has its upsides if that's all you're doing. But as you can see, this is pretty versatile. Another thing uh, which is super convenient are these little grid locks. I, the ITW makes these. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them all over the place. Uh, I buy mine from OP Tactical. Shout out to them. Um, this is a cool device because it does have a locking mechanism. So once you have your stuff installed to that, it's not gonna, it's not gonna come undone. Um, the other thing that's interesting is there is a Molly pass through here. So depending on how you set this, set this up on your Molly gear, you can actually get this to be forced like outwards. And so it's always like easy to get into. In this case, I don't need that. Um, I'm going to be mounting these to the bottoms of my pistol pouches. And I'm just going to take the hook side. And then what I'm going to do with these is I can run my tape or gloves off of it. So it's just another attachment point for stuff. Now, tape. Uh, 
a lot of people get weird about this because they're like, you're not a breacher. Why do you have tape? I'll tell you right now, I use electrical tape for all kinds of stuff, and I recommend you have tape on you. Uh, believe it or not, having an adhesive material that you can stick things to is super useful, uh, whether you're, you're a breacher or not. Um, I use this for taping up my fingers, targets, optics, you know, covering the front of them. So I always have tape on my kit at, at some level, uh, whether it's my pistol belt generally or even my plate carrier. Uh, all you really need to do is tie it off with a piece of like shot cord or paracord so that it can move freely. And then you're just going to take that and you're going to slap it on. And I'm actually going to put it on this side because it won't interfere with mags as much as my gloves. My gloves will go on this side. Now, if I can help it, the gloves do not stay on here uh, when I am shooting and doing stuff. The gloves come off of this carrier as soon as I throw it on. This is more so the gloves are just on my kit, ready to go. The other thing I can do is just throw them into the dump pouch, but whatever. When you start getting into radios and uh, PTTs, one little tip, if you take one of our uh, sling retainers, again, this is one reason I, I wear one all the time because I end up pulling it off and using it for stuff. Um, this is actually a great way of retaining uh, Nexus PTTs and other PTTs. All's, alls you gotta do is go into here. And I'm going to do, yeah, I'm gonna do the plastic side out. Drop it through the, and you could do this on any plate carrier that has a swift clip quasim attachment style. And then all you're gonna do is leave it here on the side. It's not gonna interfere with stock placement. It's not gonna interfere with uh, comfort or, or your equipment, uh, but it's there ready to go when you have a PTT you need to tie off to that. Uh, so that's just something that's nifty. Every sling comes with two of these. And so you can put one on your rifle to retain your sling, take the other one, throw it onto your plate carrier. Or you can buy them individually because people ask for that. Patches. Don't put stupid gay morale pouches on, patches on your kit. Please don't. Just go American flag. If you suck, you suck. This is like the opposite of morale. This is like, this is like uh, de de detracting. Uh, inspiring. This is an inspiring patch. So flag and this. I will say, I, I see a lot of questions from people. Um, you know, how do you prevent a blue on blue uh, or green on green or whatever in, a, in like a shooting or something? If you're running kit or thinking about wearing kit for something like that, big colored American flags, you can't go wrong with those. Uh, the biggest American flag you can get. So I have those on some of my kit that's in the car, just big American flags that are colored. Um, you know, not even this, this is kind of too small in my opinion. So if that's something you're concerned about and that your kit is in the car specifically for that purpose, you might want to think about just big, you know, American flags that are colored. So um, Ear Pro, if you are setting up your plate carrier to kind of have everything on it so you can grab it and have everything, um, I have used various clips to clip it to my shoulder pad uh, or clip it somewhere. Um, again, having this pouch is pretty cool because you could throw it in here. Um, so look, now I have everything if I grab my plate carrier, if I want ear pro, uh, and that's something that's really nice. If I'm doing night vision stuff and I want chem lights because I'm dropping them for shooting positions or I'm dropping them into ammo cans to see the ammunition because we're like doing stuff. Um, cause again, I'm not like clearing rooms and using these to signal, you know, live rooms or dead rooms or whatever. Um, I can just take this chem light holder, uh, which is another product from us and I can slap it onto the front of my loop field on the front of my, actually it's upside down, the front of my wallaby, and now I can just dump these out as I need to. So again, this is like, hey, I'm doing a night shoot, I grab that, I'm not, I don't need it. And that's just kind of what's going on. And then with this placard, if I wanna plus up, for some reason, Uh, I believe that one has speed load. I can. So now I have four doubled, one speed load with the flap tucked in. And that is pretty cool. Now the question is, what does this entire thing weigh? 21.6 pounds. Oh my gosh. That is so heavy. No. Um, okay, 21 pounds. It's not too bad. 9.8 kgs for you imperialists out there. So there it is with it on, with it worn. You can see it's very easy to get into this pouch right here. 
I need to shove all my, my crap in here. Sharpie, chem lights, another bag. It's just such an accessible pouch. Can have all the things. That's what it looks like, worn. Height's pretty good. It's about as good as I can get it with my body shape type. You'll see all the, the items here on the sides. So not the easiest pouch to get into. Um, this is where if you actually run your plate carrier lower, it's easier to get into your stuff because your arms like drop down. Um, running your stuff as high as possible, while that is good for like armor, it's not always as good for all your stuff. Um, but I have this there. I've got the multi-tool. I've got my headlamp. I can rip that out. Gloves are good to go. Pistol mag can easily get to that. It's really not so much of a problem. As far as the speed reload though, probably not gonna do that. And then when it comes time to run a radio, I have a pouch that's ready to go. So I can drop a radio in there, PTT it off. But again, on the range, I'm not really running a radio. You know, uh, communications is something for, a, that's a completely different topic, but for range activities, there's a lot of equipment you just don't need to get your shooting training in. Um, all the operational stuff like chem lights and whatever else that, that happens uh, later. Uh, but for range stuff, a couple things that I really like is having a placard that can fit any mag, like I mentioned earlier. A general purpose pouch that I can put anything into as I'm just going around and doing stuff. And then when I don't need this, I can literally just bundle it up and I'm set and I'm good to go. And then if I ever want to run slicker than what I have, I can always just rip this. And then that's what that's gonna look like without any sort of placard. Then if I flip my car bund around, I can run through weight mags and I've got something that's fairly, um, it's fairly useful. So I hope you guys learned something from this video or you got some ideas for how you wanna build your kit out. Again, there's a lot of pouches and pieces of equipment out there. There's a lot of why behind all of this stuff. For civilians, it is difficult for us to know or predict what could happen in the future. But like I've been saying now for a while, I think the, the most advantageous thing for citizens to be doing is buying a little bit of everything or finding pieces of equipment like this that can do everything or most things. And so you have that and can flex it into different roles depending on how unstable things get in the future. If you guys have any other questions about some of this equipment, you can always email us at team at t-rex-arms.com and I'll see you guys in the next video. Twenty-one pounds. Is that it? It doesn't do fluid ounces. That's lame. Why do you want fluid ounces? Because I want to see how much fluid this plate carrier is.